Hi, Robert from Clearview Property Inspections. Uh, today we're going to do a video on how to inspect your subfloor. Uh, building and timber pest in your subfloor or termite inspection, as I mentioned previously. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we do our subfloor inspections. So I'm going to show you what we need for our inspections and then I'll take you in to a subfloor and we'll go through things. So come with me. Okay. So the things you're going to need when you get into a subfloor um, is a respirator like this, something similar. Um, so obviously it's a bit more substantial than what we use when we do our roof voids. Um, reason being, uh, subfloors um, sometimes, uh, if they have moisture issues and whatnot, um, they can have mold and things like that. Um, so you definitely don't want to be breathing in mold spores. Um, so I would be using something more substantial. Um, you're going to need overalls, these ones are pretty dirty but um, I use them regularly and then you need an old pair of shoes, 100%, don't use anything good um, as a lot of subfloors are quite muddy um, and before you enter a subfloor have a quick look with the torch because if it is very wet um, you will need to put some type of coverall, waterproof coverall, over your overalls because you will come out drenched. Um, so, no matter what, we will get in there and we'll, we usually do our subfloors unless we physically can't get in there wet. We get in there no matter what. Um, we, do know, we do know many inspectors which do not. If it's too wet, they just don't go in there. Um, but we do. So, um, you might need a set of coveralls on top of your overalls. Um, old pair of shoes or gum boots. Um, again, the latex gloves. You will be crawling on your hands and knees. So if you don't wear some type of glove, your hands will come out muddy um, or quite dirty um, most of the time. So gloves, same, same thing. Get a hat, a lot of subfloors, full of cobwebs, spiders, things like that. The subfloor is not a great place to be, so make sure you're fully covered up. Um, Torch, same as a roof void, head torch so you can use your hands to maneuver around. And then also, like I said, I like to use a powerful torch to shine the light into certain locations in the subfloor where I need um, really bright light. Um, and then my favorite screwdriver, um, which I'll show you what we do with. Um, so that's what we're gonna need to do our subfloor inspections for our timber pest um, and building inspection and uh, I'll take you with me now and we'll do an inspection together. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, Robert from Clearview. Um, inspections, about to do that uh, subfloor um, inspection. Um, I'll take you with me on this one, um, give you a bit of a, an idea of what we do in a subfloor for a building and timber pest inspection. Um, sorry about the light, let me see if I can turn that off. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a bit of an idea of what we do. Um, obviously, different type of respirator on this one. Um, subfloors um, usually have sometimes have mold and who knows what else in there. So I do like to um, wear something a bit more um, better to help with that. Um, a respirator. Um, got my overalls, my gloves. Um, if it is very damp, obviously you might have to put like a waterproof coveralls over your overalls. Um, but um, let me take it with me and. I'll try and show you the best I can. It is difficult to crawl around and video at the same time, but I'll, I'll do my best, okay? Okay, so, um, yeah, at first glance, we can see um, there is a um, bit of moisture, a um, bit of mold. Um, you can see there, that color, well, that's all mold, right? Yeah, and that's all ca caused by um, the, the drainage, the water getting into the subfloor, subfloor, you can see, right? So it all builds up to this corner, um, and that's generally from poor side drainage, yeah? So probably all the, the house, this house in particular, um, the back of the house is a little bit higher on the back left-hand corner. Um, so the drainage around the house um, uh, is probably insufficient, and the water's getting into the subfloor, um, and this is... Uh, the result. Um, so you get um, poor side drainage, poor subfloor drainage. Um, but um, you can see these people have a um, 
uh, a ventilation system, which is great. So they're trying to um, keep the moisture levels down. Um, they've also got a fan here, uh, which are installed. Um, and they do have passive vents as well, so it's not too bad. Um, in saying that, it's obviously not ideal. So what, what moisture creates, um, like this creates a, a foundation movement. Um, so that means that the foundations move and that causes piers to move, right? So when the foundation moves, um, you get water in the, in the soil, in the clay, they expand and contract and the foundation moves. And so there's a footings and the piers move. And that's what you get when you get um, undulated floors right um the floors get go up and down um and that's because of the piers either sagging or leaning so that's what we're looking for um in this case um we can see that all the bearers are solid um on the piers which is great um and that's what we need to look for um you know at first glance i haven't done the full inspection but the piers are pretty straight um and they're not they're not leaning as yet that i found but that's one of the things that we want to look for right um, some of the solutions for site drainage, if this is your subfloor and you're thinking, well, how can I fix it? Um, well, you can start off with the perimeter of the house first. Um, try and veer the water away from the house. That's um, first and foremost. If you can do that, um, you're in a good place. And this is not just for older homes. Um, it's for the newer existing. It's the biggest cause for damage to houses is poor site drainage. Um, and it's most of the time neglected um, and then when people start wondering why they're getting um, cracks in their homes why the slabs are cracking why we're getting undulated floors um, why the pavers are all wavy outside it's just insufficient site drainage um, you speak to any good landscaper or any builder and they'll tell you that's key um, to maintain your house to a really high level to get a good site drainage right um, so keep that in mind if, if you're building a new house a lot of times the builders build a new house and they've they leave you the house and then you've got to do the landscaping and whatnot. Um, consider putting ag lines around the house, your footpath, make sure it's veered away from the house. Um, so you've got all the water going away, um, have drainage points, pits, things like that, right? So that's uh, one thing to keep in mind. Okay, um, so that's what we're looking for in the building inspection. We want to make sure that the piers are all good, foundations, footings, ant caps. All right, so let me tell you a bit about ant caps, all right? This is called an ant cap, all right? Should be on every single pier, all right? Here's on the single skin brickwork, all right? And it's on the engaged pier, all right? Okay, so what's the purpose of an ant cap? Okay, so ant cap, yeah, it's sort of kind of self-explanatory. It's mainly for termites, right? So termites have the capability to come in between um, enter a home or track in between brickwork. So the ant cap was designed so when they come in between the brickwork, concealed, we can't see it, um, that they get to the ant cap and they can't get through. So what's the termite do? It comes around, it builds its lead and it comes this way. What's that achieve? Doesn't stop, ant caps don't stop them from eating your house. What it does, it brings them out to the open. So when you get your annual termite inspection, this is the reason why everyone recommends, uh, the government recommends at least an annual termite inspection um, is to when the inspector is doing his inspection he can see um, um, and when there's no concealed entrance right and you can pick up any leads that are coming through so that's the idea in saying that this house you can see um, the glue the solders are falling apart so it's got to be glued and soldered it all, all joins right because then defeats the purpose because they can come through and conceal see like over this one you can see that there all right it's not glued down so the termites could potentially come up this pier come behind it um, and get into that bearer and it'll be very difficult to see right no matter how thorough you are if they get it right behind there until they've got, really gotten into the timber and done a bit of damage um, so that's the idea of ant caps now you'll find in the older homes um, the 40s the 50s 1940s 1950s um, uh, they used like sandstone piers and um structure um they had no end caps um and if you have one of those houses um you know around petersham lewisham uh, marrickville are common places chatswood um 
yeah, you really need to get like a, a preventative system, termite preventative system in place um, because there's nothing that you can get concealed entrance. Um, so it's always make sure you get your annual inspections at least um, and consider a preventative system. Um, so similar to the roof void, um, termites will come in, like we said, uh, the bathrooms, the laundry, the kitchens, um, stuff like that. Um, and the porches, um, any porch and whatnot. Um, so same, you want to inspect those areas um, because that's the likelihood that where termites are going to, well, you want to inspect everywhere, but that's the likelihood where termites are going to come in. So let's have a bit of a run down to the laundry on this one, see what it looks like. Um, <coughs> okay. <coughs> Okay, so this one's the laundry. Okay, so we can see that the formwork timbers have been removed. Generally, back in the day, um, and still happens to this day whenever they do any suspended slabs, um, they leave the formwork timbers in. So back in the day, they used to use corrugated iron, where you can see up there, um, put um, like timber struts underneath to support it. And then those timber struts stay in place. Um, and what happens, uh, timber and ground contact, uh, moist ground like this house um, great source they got the moisture they got timber and they'll start consuming and once they start consuming um, it's not hard for them to make their way in right so you've got a cavity over there if they make their way up into that cavity that cavity will lead them straight into the um, the, the the wall frame up top yeah the bottom plate the studs and then that's where they start eating and then they work their way up into the roof cavity and that's why I always say um if you can check the top plates in the laundry the bathrooms and and the kitchens and whatnot because um they're good entry points um common entry points right so this is just an example and you'll find this type of construction on like i said around the porch um area same thing suspended slabs corrugated old formwork timbers um, formed upstairs um formwork underneath the house always common spots to find um termite activity so you really want to check that um, and be thorough, especially if you're a DIYer. Um, again, don't open any termite leads or touch any termites if you find them, um, because if you scare the termites away, um, they will they will um, retreat um, if they're frightened, um, but then they'll come back um, when you least expect it. So um, it's very hard to treat um, if you scare them away. Okay, um, so that's the laundry. Um, so I'll make my way to um the bathroom and we'll do a similar inspection um but um again you gotta you gotta inspect all the brickwork as well you gotta look for cracks um uh any footings which um don't look solid or they're starting to sag away or voids so to speak or anything like that you really gotta um, pay attention for your ins inspection so let me make my way up to um the bathroom um which is up further up there and that's the one of the corner of the building and i want i like to start from a corner of a building work my way out um but let's go up to the bathroom and let's see what we find there and we'll go from there okay just hold on one tick i'll get up there and i'll restart recording okay so i'm making through my way through the bathroom as you can see it's uh it's a bit tight but you've got to crawl in here yeah so not much room um, but we, you got an army crawl all the way through. Get through. And here we go. Okay. So this is where we are. So this is just um, under the bathroom. Okay. So let's have a look. So obviously, yeah, we've got rising damp. Yeah. So you can see the mold. It's the moisture. All right. Um, look, it's no big deal. Um, it is moisture, but you can see where the ant capping is. So, so where the ant capping is, and not only it provides ant capping, it's a damp proof course, right? So let's have a look. Uh, see that? So you can see that layer there. That's the damp proof course. This is the ant capping. So that's the idea of that is to, when moisture is coming up through there, it stops there. It doesn't keep going up. And that's the idea of it. Um, so this obviously can happen. Mold's not ideal, 
um, but the moisture obviously the water from the outside um, along the pit, the footpath is coming in and creating the dampness there um, okay so here we go so, so now it all does look a little bit old let's have a look here yeah. okay so there is a bit of dampness it does look a bit old it looks pretty dry um but um okay so we have to get the screwdriver there later we'll tap that um see how solid it is um but does look a little bit of dampness through. So this is where the shower is, just above here. Um, so that's what we're here to look at. These bearers, the joists that support the floor, everything abutting the edge of the bathroom. That's always where there's always going to be issues. If there's a shower there. There's a good chance if the waterproofing breaks down, um, it'll come through to here, to the bearers and joists and start damaging these timbers, right? Um, so doesn't look too bad there is a few moisture stains um, but um, yeah we'll have a bit of a further in-depth look once I get off the video but this is just a bit of a video to show you what to look for right same thing over here so uh, the corrugated iron usually there's form work um, uh, supporting that same thing um, if there is check those form work timbers on all the way around them make sure there's no termites all the way around them because um, it is quite common um, for them to attack the termites that are in ground contact um, check for moisture leaks check for damage um, bearers joists along the shower things like that um, and you want to do that obviously the bathrooms laundries and whatnot so once you check those hot spots that there's no termites check all the timbers are solid um, any wood rot things like that then basically um, my recommendation is obviously you've got to check all the single skin brickwork for cracks the piers um, that are um, nice and straight they're not leaning um, the, 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 the foundations aren't um, um, falling away that the, the, the movement and whatnot so um, here we got part of the subfloor this way you can see it's gonna be very hard to get access into there very very low um, so all we've got to do, we've got to try and get as far in as we can um, and see what we can what, what we can inspect, inspect there, okay? Um, so for the termite side of things, I like to start um, at one corner of the subfloor and work my way out, right? So um, I want to check all bearers, all joists, all floorboards. I want to check everything. Um, I want to check for previous damage, um, existing um uh, previous termite damage or, ex or existing termites so that's what i'm looking for and i'll check every single tip timber i'll check every single pier around every single pier see if there's any termite leads coming up and i'll work i'll work my way from one corner of the building all the way through until i get out um, and that way i can do a thorough assessment of if there's any active termites or if there was any previous termites i can look for wood rot I can look for cracks, I can look for leaning piers, or sagging piers, things like that. Um, and that's the aim of my building and timber pest inspection underneath. Um, obviously assess the site drainage underneath it, ventilation. Um, this house does have a few passive vents around, um, but it could probably do with a few extras. Um, but yeah, they do have a subfloor ventilation system, which is great. Um, and they're trying to do their best. Um, so that's a positive. But um, that's a bit of a quick rundown of what what I would do in the subfloor inspection. Um, and again, it takes time. When you think about by the time you work your way out, um, it's not a quick five minute inspection underneath here. We'll be here, we'll be here for a fair bit of time. So subfloors are uh, 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 time consuming. Probably one of the hardest things um, for an inspector. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll try and uh, do more videos as I, um, as I do other inspections. Thank you.